Good morning, Year 11. For the very last time, I get to greet you on a video. I'll try and keep it brief. Um, so you know, there's a letter gone out to parents, but just to back that up, uh, you're coming in on the Monday, you will be held in um, one of the main halls, it's the sports hall, and you'll be taken across for your lateral flow test. The thing that will take the longest time is not the test itself, it's registering the test on computer, so that's what's going to take the time. The rest of the day you'll be in the sports hall and work will be set remotely by your teachers as it has been uh, throughout lockdown. The only difference is you'll be in a room with your friends. Um, there will be a lot of work, I hope. Um, there might be too much to do. That is by design. Do not worry. Um, basically, it's to stop you getting bored so you've got plenty to do and plenty to be getting on with. Um, also, uh, you know that the mocks are coming up and they're going to be reasonably important. We now know what the government require from us in terms of evidence and basically the more you do, the better you do, the better your grade, obviously. Uh, don't worry, uh, if you do horrendously badly it's not going to pull your grade down, that's not how we're operating. We're operating on DfE guidelines and we're, we're in your corner. We're trying to make things as best as we possibly can for you. So try your hardest. Do all of the work that you are set, do all of the assessments to the best of your ability, and you will come out all right in the end. Uh, but of course you would. Why would you do different? Um, today, I'm going to take you through the answers of Wednesday's quiz. Thank you to uh, all two of you who took part. Um, yes, um, thanks. Uh, at least you did. Um, and as usual, I've... Oh no, I've moved them. I don't know what marks we're getting because, like an idiot, I've moved the answers you've given. I think they're in a pile of paper over there because I'm trying to clear up. So, um, here goes nothing. I don't know what the answers are and I can't remember what you said. Uh, by which date has the government pledged to vaccinate all adults in Britain against COVID-19? The answer is July 31st or the 31st of July, which was A. Um, I think we got that one right. Uh, more than 17 million people have been given the first of two jabs since the UK's COVID vaccine rollout began in December 2020. Uh, Johnson said he now wants the programme to go further and faster. Uh, of course he does. Um, he said the July target would allow vulnerable people to be protected sooner. Uh, that's true. All of these things are true. Whether or not we'll manage that with a second uh, jab or whether he's talking about the first jab, who knows? I suspect probably the latter. Uh, China's President Xi Jinping has announced a complete victory in the campaign to end rural poverty. China defines extreme rural poverty as anyone earning less than, and yes, I don't know why it's in, uh, not in yuan uh, or yen uh, as well, and, and why it's in dollars, but the answer is $2.12 per day. It was C. Uh, China defines rural extreme poverty as annual income of less than 4,000 yen, or $777, or about $2.12 a day per person. Ten years ago, 99 million people living in China had yearly incomes of less than 2,300 yen. Yeah, but there's this thing called inflation. So I guess that's great for China. Prince Philip has spent a number of days in hospital fighting an infection. How old is he? Um, he's 99 years old. Um, there we go. He's been treated for an infection. His son, Prince Edward, said his father was a lot better. I mean, that's great for Edward. I'm, I'm pleased for him. I genuinely am. I don't wish death on any man. Uh, the palace indicated that Prince Philip is likely to remain in hospital for several days. Uh, that's sad, but I don't know why we care. Um, who is responsible uh, for this artwork? Uh, there it is, Banksy. I'm not sure it is. Uh, it's been removed from the side of the building in Nottingham and sold to a collector who paid a six-figure sum for the price. I noticed this the other day. I was very upset. Um, as well as put it on display. The artwork display depicts a girl hula hooping with a bicycle tyre and appeared on a residential street last October. And it was on my route to take my daughter to various places where we could do that. Um, I'm not convinced it's a Banksy. I think it's someone doing it in Banksy style, but yeah, whatever. Uh, Ghana has become the first country in the world to receive COVID-19 vaccine for free from a global initiative. Um, originally, the, co uh, the uh, creators of the Oxford vaccine wanted to make it free for everybody to create and use in their own labs, uh, but were convinced not to by the Bill Gates Foundation, who wanted them to um, hold it for one company so that that one company could sell it. Which city has been announced as the preferred host for the 2032 Summer Olympic Games? It was Brisbane. Well done, Australia. Um, it will become the third Australian city to host the Summer Games after Melbourne and Sydney. Paris will host the 2024 Summer Olympics and Los Angeles the 2028 Summer Olympics, assuming they go ahead in their current format. Uh, Tokyo is having difficulties. 
Why hundreds of university students evacuated from 12 halls of residence in Exeter last week? Um, apparently, uh, and, and you knew this, it was an unexploded World War II bomb. I did not know this. Uh, 2,600 properties in the vicinity of Glenthorpe Road, including 1,400 university students, were evacuated on Friday and Saturday. Uh, the noise of the explosion was heard for miles around and left a crater the size of a double-decker bus. Goodness. As well as sending debris up to 250 metres away from the site of the blast. Wow. Uh, just wow. Uh, what was this man's uh, house in Denver hit by? Um, it was part of an aircraft. I, I think it's the cowling on the jet engine. Um, a United Airlines flight heading from Denver International Airport to Honolulu suffered engine failure shortly after takeoff on Saturday, scattering engine debris across a Colorado city. The plane made a safe landing. That's good to know. Which Commonwealth country recently observed the 10th anniversary of a devastating earthquake? It was, of course, New Zealand. Uh, they paused to mark 10 years since one of the nation's deadliest natural disasters, um, which caused 185 deaths and changed both Christchurch and New Zealand forever. Well, earthquakes tend to do that wherever they take place, to be honest. Question 10. In which sport do British teams like the London Pulse, Manchester Thunder and Celtic Dragons compete? It is netball. Awesome! Uh, there are 10 teams across the country that compete in the Vitality Netball Super League. The current champions are the Manchester Thunder, who won the 2019 title before COVID-19 disrupted the 2020 season. Uh, the 2021 title is being contested apparently right now. Archaeologist Pompeii found a ceremonial chariot. Why is Pompeii so important? Well, none of those are the reason. It's site of an ancient volcanic eruption, sure, but the reason it's important is because it's perfectly preserved, not because of the... We don't care about the eruption so much as what we find in the eruption. Um, Provided archaeologists with a snapshot of life in the area at that time. That's the important bit. The chariot was found fully intact. Which famous sportsman was lucky to survive this situation? I knew the answer to this one. It's Tiger Woods. Uh, he was driving alone through a sweeping downhill stretch of road. Um, he struck a sign, crossed over the raised meridian, and two oncoming lanes of flat uh, traffic flipped several times before coming to rest on its side. Uh, it was saved by airbags. There we go. Um, Great how cars are safe these days, and, and it is genuinely great. What is being called one of Israel's worst ecological disasters? It's a massive oil spill off their coastline. Uh, they, can, they closed all their Mediterranean beaches until further notice. Um, there are tons of tar, 160 kilometers of coastline in what officials are calling one of the wor country's worst ecological disasters. No one's sure what the cause of the spill was. The Hasbro toy Mr. Potato Head has been in the news lately because he's a conservative talking point. Uh, it's the removal of Mr. That's it because it's a potato. It doesn't need gender. Um, it was first sold in 1952 when it didn't even come with a plastic potato. I remember those days too, because uh, the whole point was you stuck them into a potato. The concept of a plastic potato seems bizarre to me, utterly bizarre, um, and, and, a, and a great waste. I mean, you could put them anywhere in a potato. You could just stick them in a potato. Why, 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 why do you need a plastic thing with whole? Anyway. Uh, more than 70 Australian black baby bats, or baby black bats, who were on the brink of starvation three months ago are released into the wild. What's a baby bat known as? It's a pup! I genuinely thought it was a kit, so I was wrong on this one, so thank you for getting that one right, those of you that responded. Um, the infants were among hundreds of bat pups that were mysteriously abandoned in early December. The number of bats involved required care groups from different areas to coordinate, um, and now they're released. Which Asian country is this flag? I didn't know, I just knew it wasn't Vietnam. The answer is Thailand. Well done, thank you. Uh, true or false, Australian news is back on Facebook. It's true. Facebook agreed to reverse the ban after the Australian government agreed to amend its media bargaining laws. Facebook will now give more time to strike deals with Australian, Australian media outlets. What is the most populated settlement in Staffordshire? It's Stoke-on-Trent. Well done. Uh, with around 250,000 people, Stoke-on-Trent is considerably bigger than the second largest settlement of Tamworth, which is 75,000 people, and fifth and sixth largest, Stafford and Lith Litchfield. Well, there you go. Um, why we're doing about Staffordshire, I don't know. Was that in the news? Um, what action has the environmental organisation Greenpeace been taking recently to stop fishing boats trawling the seafloor near Brighton? They've been dropping boulders. Excellent. Uh, the protest action is part of a campaign to tighten restrictions on most destructive forms of fishing and protect areas of UK waters. Uh, these are the fishing communities to try the action as dangerous, illegal and irresponsible. Well, of course they would. Trawling involves dragging nets along the seafloor and the boulders will interfere with that. If you want to find out more, uh, there's a click here link. I will, I will play that to you when we're back in class. I'm not, I'm not going to put the link today. You've got enough to get on with. And question 20, what's the first name of this woman? It is, of course, Nicola. Nicola Sturgeon has been the First Minister of Scotland since 20th November 2014. She's been in the news a lot lately. Um, 
I'm trying to keep this short. It's already almost 10 minutes long. You've got loads of things to do today. Um, you've got a busy day. You've got things to do, places to, to be, people to think about. I don't know. Have a lovely day, Year 11. I hope it's been a good week. Enjoy the weekend. Take your time. Relax. When you come back, we're coming back in uniform. You'll be back in for a normal school day. You'll be here for the full school day. Do not worry. And everything will be back to, well, pre-Christmas normal on Tuesday when I'll see you for the morning reg and you'll have a normal day of lessons. I hope that you're looking forward to it. I hope it's not too stressful. I hope you, you've had a reasonably good lockdown. Um, obviously not perfect, cannot be perfect, but I hope it's been all right. I hope you're not too stressed and I am genuinely looking forward to seeing you all again. Have a lovely day and I'll see you next